And uh, the fruit, as we are told in, 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 here and in Revelation, it yielded its fruit every 30 days. So that means these trees were really producing. Now, why are we told this story in Ezekiel and in Revelation? I believe it's like this. First of all, the sanctuary is Jesus Christ. The water flowing out of the side was the water coming out of the side where they pierced Jesus in the side. I'm talking about healing waters now. And this water flowed eastward, down through the Kidron Valley, on down to the Dead Sea. Now, east of Jerusalem is the Dead Sea. I don't know. It took us, so when we went there, it took us about 45 minutes in the bus to drive there. But we were 1,500 feet above sea level. The Dead Sea is about 1,500 feet below sea level. So when we had a 3,000 mile, uh, 3,000 foot drop from Jerusalem down to the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea was a Dead Sea. There was nothing living in it. As a matter of fact, we're told that even the birds don't fly over it, at least they didn't in the early days because of the, the salt and the sulfur coming up from it would uh, literally harming the birds. But nothing lives in the Dead Sea. I got in it. They told us to take off all jewelry because it's, it's very highly fortified with chemicals. And because everything runs down, there's nowhere for the water to go. The only way the water comes out of there is to evaporate. And it's constantly fed by the Jordan River. At the time I went, I had just had surgery, and I was scared to get in the water, but they said it was good for healing. I, I waded in into the ankle deep portion because the water was black. But it wasn't dirty. And I splashed the water up on me because I was still scared to get in it. And a couple of people, they didn't get out and swim and so forth. But nothing was living in that water. And uh, what Ezekiel was telling us is that that water that flowed from out of the right side of the temple ran down into the Dead Sea. And when it touched the waters of the Dead Sea, everything came to life. Everything that touched it on its way down came to life. Now we said Jesus Christ is the sanctuary, and it was from his side where the water flowed out. The flowing water, the healing waters, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever it goes, it will heal you if you would open yourself up to it and receive it. Now, why to the Dead Sea? Why did it flow to the Dead Sea? North, that was to the southeast of, uh, of Jerusalem. To the northeast of Jerusalem was the Sea of Tiberias. At that time of Jesus, it was called the Sea of, the, the sea of, of Galilee. But back in Ezekiel's day, it was the uh, Sea of Tiberias. And then to the west was the Mediterranean Sea. But it didn't say, the, the Bible doesn't say anything about healing those other waters. It said it healed the waters in the Dead Sea. And what that tells me is this, is that if the gospel is the healing water flowing. And notice this water went out. As they walked out, it got deeper and deeper and wider and wider. But there were no tributaries flowing into it to, to build it and make it larger. And I took a look at the map, looking at the Potomac River, starting up in West Virginia, winding its way down here. There's a whole lot of little tributaries feeding the Potomac River so that it would be as large as it is down here. But this river that Ezekiel saw didn't have any of that. It was being uh, deepened and widened by its own source. Isn't that what, that's what the gospel is? The gospel feeds itself. It is strong enough, and, and, and the thing is, is that the more it goes out, the further out it goes, the wider it spreads, the more people it reaches. Why the Dead Sea? The Dead Sea, because those are the sinners. Those are the people out there who are not saved. Those are the dead people. Because if you don't have Christ in your life, you're dead. So what he said is as this gospel goes out, this gospel goes out and it touches all of these people and they will come to life because they will receive Jesus. And as they receive Jesus, guess what? They will receive eternal life because they will be saved. Now, his message also says, but when he came back, there were trees on both sides. Now this is the tree of life. Now John tells us over in Revelation that there was a tree of life on each side. Not one tree, many trees. And each tree bore its fruit 
every 30 days. And the fruit was for food, and the leaves of the tree was for healing. <coughs> All right? That's Revelation. That's another message that we'll talk about one day, what that all means. But let's look at Ezekiel, what he saw and what he, he was talking to us. He was talking about our times. He was talking about the water being the gospel. And these trees, I picture, are us. We are the trees. We are like the tree planted by the river of water. Our roots run deep there in Jesus Christ so that we are strong and we will bear fruit. The fruit that we bear will be saving souls. That's the, that's the, that's the uh, fruit that is on the tree of life that's running beside that river. And the leaves are for healing. But guess what? You take these little branches here and you lay hands on them. Because the Bible tells us, the gospel of Jesus Christ tells us, if you lay hands on, you will heal people. You have the power. Jesus Christ, when he left there, he said, I give you all power. Greater things you will be able to do than I am. So if Jesus was able to heal, that means we are too. But why don't we? Because we don't have enough faith. We don't have enough confidence. We are scared that we will be embarrassed, so we won't even try. But let me tell you, it is there. It is written. God's word is real. It's true. He said that we will be able to do those things. So what I want to leave you with, and, and, and I don't want to get you all confused here, but I want you to think of that running water as the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the trees, we represent the trees, they are the people that's going to bear the fruit for God so that his kingdom will build. And I want you to know one other thing, and I'm going to close with this. Jesus Christ, when he left here, he left three of his most valuable assets here on earth. He left his spirit. That is to indwell in us, to keep us going. He left the healing water, his gospel. That is for us to feed on and to share with others. And he left us to be the messengers, to carry that gospel to the other most parts of the world. And if we did that, then we could do what? We would be able to see what John saw over there. When John was looking, he saw the new Jerusalem, and he saw that river flowing out from under the throne of God with the trees on both sides of it. And there is where the Lord Jesus is. That is where he has his kingdom. And if you want to see him, if you want to see him, you need to take advantage of this healing water now. Grab your portion of it, take it out there, spread it to people, live the life you want. Stop being those people who are crooked, who are cheaters, who are liars. Stop being those fornicators. Stop being those people who, who, who want to do things behind your back. You have to be straightforward and be what God wants you to be. Be righteous and live a righteous life. And if you do that, I guarantee you that you will be able to look upon his face when you get to glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.